Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, as I'm sure you picked up from the title of this video, we're going to be taking another look at signals. And this time, uh, we're going to look at a very easy way, a very cheap way, to add signals to your model railroad. So, let's move on. But first, I want to ask you one more time, hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Before we get started with uh, our look at uh, signals, I first want to give you a little bit of feedback. And the first thing I want to talk about is comments, because I, uh, I appreciate all your comments. I do try to answer all of your comments. However, if for any reason you do not get a response from me, it can be for a couple of different reasons. First of all, when you go back and add a comment to a very old video, for some reason, I cannot find it. And I get uh, emails from YouTube telling me when a new comment is added to any one of my videos. And I've, I have clicked on that link and gone back, and for a number of times, I have not been able to find the comment that they are linking to. So, if you're asking a question about a very old video, there's a good chance that I will never be able to find that comment. So, in, the, in a case like that, I think your best bet is to create a comment under a current video and uh, go ahead and ask an off-topic question and I'll try to respond to that. So if you've asked a question and I haven't responded to you, that's probably the reason why. Now another related uh, thing I want to point out is it is much better for you to create your own comment thread. Do not ask questions under somebody else's set of comments because that way your, your, your specific comment may get lost as well. And I really do want to try to answer all your questions, but please, add your, add your own comments separate from other people's threads. And that way there's a much better chance that I will actually see your comment and be able to respond to that. So thanks for that. Now the other uh, topic that I wanted to address was in last week's video on speed tables, I uh, covered the subject of forward and reverse trims. And unfortunately, uh, a few people responded with questions for me about that. And basically, they indicated that they were having trouble wrapping their brains around the concept of the forward and reverse trims and what they're used for. So uh, basically, the best thing I can tell you, go ahead and uh, visit the Soundtracks website and go to their reference section and download one of the uh, technical reference manuals, either the steam or the diesel. Uh, they both have pretty much the same material. And look up the material on the forward and the reverse trims. And those are covered under CV66 and CV95. And they go through uh, what those are used for, the various values that you input in them, and how it affects it. And if you can take a look at that, and then get one of your locomotives out, put it on the track, and using your throttle, make some changes to CVs, 66 and 95, using ops mode programming. And that way you'll be able to immediately see what the effect of those small changes to those CVs can have on the forward and the reverse speed for a given locomotive. And so that's probably the, the easiest way for you to get a feeling for how this actually works. I, I'll be honest with you, I have not found uh, that I need to use the forward and reverse trim all that often. It's just not something that uh, you run into very often. And typically, as long as you're running similar locomotives made by the same manufacturer or even the same model type, um, you probably won't have any problems with the forward and reverse speeds being out of sync. It's only when you're trying to match up older and newer locomotives or locomotives from different manufacturers that you're going to run into issues. So let's go ahead and take a look at signals. And I have covered this topic uh, in a couple of earlier videos. Uh, in videos 212 and 213, I showed you the DCC Concepts 
ground signals, and I still think those are probably the most prototypically accurate way to implement signals in a uh, main yard and in areas where you want something down at ground level instead of up high and potentially getting sideswiped by locomotives or loads or things of that nature. So they're great for protecting sidings and where sidings come back into the main line. They're great for uh, use in yards. If you're not all that interested in using the ground signals and uh, the prototypically accurate and scale size ones, then you're probably going to be looking at using these kind of standard signals that you see on modern railroads as well as older railroads. These have been in use in the United States for a long time, and so they, they fit in well with a lot of different prototypes and eras. So what I want to show you today is how you can use these in yards and in similar situations as you would use the ground uh, signals. And I will show you a very inexpensive way to use these. And that's assuming that you've already bought these. And as I said in, uh, I think it was either video 217 or 218, where I showed you how to use these with an optical detector, I got these from a seller in China off of eBay. And I'll put uh, some information, I'll try to find the original seller's name and, and the like, and put that in the description. If not, just look on eBay and do a search for, you know, HO scale railroad signals, and these will come up. Because there are a number of different sellers uh, from China on eBay that offer these. And they're a reasonable uh, facsimile of the prototype. They're a little bit shorter than the prototype would be, and they use a larger LED than I would typically want to use. But this is about the, the most inexpensive, ready to run, right off the shelf uh, option that you would have. And they will work very well in the situation that I'm going to show you. And that is, as I said, protecting where a siding joins a main line or in a yard area where you have a lot of movement of trains uh, off of sightings and into the main running through the yard. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, and I'll show you a very, very easy way to set these up, wire them, and be running in no time at all. Before we get started, I want to give you a look at this signal, because it comes pre-wired with the red, the yellow, and the green lights, LEDs, built into it, and it has the wires, and you've got red, yellow, and green wires. So the wires are color-coded to match the LEDs in the signal head. In addition, there is a common return wire that has, and that is black, and it has a 1000 ohm resistor already attached to it. So these are ready. All you have to do is attach these to the wiring on your model railroad, and you're ready to go. Uh, you don't have to worry about adding your own dropping resistor. And what I'm going to show you how to do is how to use these uh, very easily and wire these up very quickly to your model railroad. So let's go ahead and look at that. I went ahead and set up one of these signals here on the layout. It's just a temporary installation to give you an idea of how this works. So what I've just done is I've used a couple, a few uh, alligator clips to clip these wires to the uh, individual rails and to the frog itself. And so that was just a temporary way to be able to show you the connections and how to make them. And uh, once I get ready to install it permanently, I'll just drill a hole down through the ballast and slide things down through there and make the electrical contacts underneath. But for this demonstration, I wanted you to be able to see how I have the individual wires connected. So you can see here we've got the red wire for the red light, the green wire for the green light, which is on now, and then I have my black wire with its resistor attached to the frog itself. So the uh, phase or the polarity of the uh, black wire, the common, is going to be switching as I throw the tortoise switch machine that powers this given frog itself. And then I have the individual green and red wire feeds connected to the appropriate rail. And what happens is, whenever I throw the uh, turnout points, the polarity or the phase of the power being fed to the frog is going to change. And depending on whichever one of these wires completes the circuit, at that point, 
will either get a red light or a green light. So let me go ahead and show you this. It is just downright simple. It's one of those things where you want to slap yourself in the head and say, why didn't I think of this before? So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to throw the uh, turn out and you can see what happens. So you can see there we've switched to red. And at this time then, now that I've thrown the switch, the points are set against this route. So we've got a red light because we don't want a locomotive advancing through this switch, through this turnout, when the points are set against it. And so that red light prevents that from happening because the locomotive should stop. But when we throw the points the other direction so that we have a route that is clear through the turnout, then we get a green light, which is what we want. And this is so darn simple. Once you purchase one of these sets of, uh, of signals or build your own, and there are articles that have appeared in Model Railroader, Railroad Model Craftsman, and other uh, magazines over the years on how to build signals like this. But all you have to do is wire them up like this, hook up the uh, common connection to the frog where it's going to be switching polarity, and then each time that the polarity of that frog changes, you're going to get a change in the LEDs. And that works because in order to complete a circuit, the two wire contacts have to be of opposite polarity or opposite phase, in this case with DCC. And so when we are throwing it one way, we get a connection between the green and the black, and then in the other, other direction, we get a connection between the red and the black. And that's going to give you a proper change in power that's going to feed through to your LEDs and turn them on or off as the situation requires. Now, you could use these here. I could put one here in this area. I could put one on that to protect that uh, set of points over there. And a number of places here in my yard, I can use these as controls to signal the locomotives when and when, when they should and should not uh, advance through a turnout through a set of points. And it really is that simple, folks. It really is. Now, for the final installation, you can just attach these two wires, the red and the green, to your uh, power bus underneath of your model railroad, and then connect your frog feed uh, under the layout to the wire that is fed through to your frog. And that could be coming off of your tortoise switch machine. It could be coming off of an IP digital switch machine. It could be coming off of any type of switch machine that you are using to actually switch power to your frog. I don't know how much simpler this could be. It is very, very easy and straightforward. Uh, I would also uh, potentially use these, as I said earlier, on sidings where I have a siding with a um, uh, coming into a main line and I want to be able to signal those uh, locomotives on the, main, on the uh, siding when, they, when, they, when they should and when they should not be entering the main line as well. So there's a number of different situations where you can use these given uh, sets of signals and this configuration to throw that. And the great thing is it doesn't require any kind of additional circuitry under the layout to control the, the feed power feed to your uh, LEDs. All you need is some way to switch power to your frog. You could be using the uh, single the uh, uh, single pole double throw um, switch built into tortoise switch machines or the IP digital, any of these that you would use. Uh, you could also use the specific caboose ground throw that has a switch built into it. And at some point in the future, I will get a hold of one of those and we will do a video on uh, ways to control uh, power to your frogs without using tortoise switch machines or IP digitals or, or any of the other motorized uh, controls for your turnouts. Now, of course, this would also work with the Bluepoint switch machines that are manual that I showed you how to install on the modules. And I'll, put, I'll try to remember to put links to all of these videos uh, either directly here uh, in the video or at the end of the video. So make sure you watch through to the end and you can pick up uh, links to all of those videos that I've just mentioned. 
Now, you might find that you need to play around with which one, the red or the green wire needs to be attached to which DCC feed under the layout. But that's something you can figure out for yourself and just simply make a temporary connection to the DCC power bus and if you need to change it, if it's not changing properly, then just reverse the connections and you'll be good to go. But that's all there is to it. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that gives you some ideas on how you can use these signals on your model railroad and how simple and easy it is to wire these up uh, to your tortoise switch machine or directly to your wiring on your model railroad. So take a look at this, have some fun with it over the weekend, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.